Hello everyone. In evaluation of composite characteristics, what uh, we have already discussed the characterization of matrix material and characterization of reinforcing material. Now, we will discuss here the testing and characterization of composite material. So, before testing we must know the mechanisms of failure in composites, then only we can understand the requirement of different test techniques. So, during its life cycle a composite is subjected to different forces and it can withstand some forces and some other forces which damage its structure. So, the following incidents are observed when a fiber reinforced polymer composite fails. These are the incidents through which the fiber reinforced composite fails it is by matrix cracking, fiber pull out, fiber bridging, fiber matrix debonding and fiber rupture. These are the different mechanism, different processes by which a matrix can fail. So, we must understand, we must know this phenomena and we must know how to test or how to characterize the matrix to know all these processes. So, nature of damage can be by in plane damage, by micro buckling, by delamination or by buckling delamination. So, these are the different nature of damages. The main issue in composite is that it is made of two entirely different components and their addition it is very important. It is not a homogeneous material, it is a heterogeneous material. So, this in plane damage, micro buckling, delamination, buckling damage we must understand. So, out of plane stress leads to delamination because the fibers do not contribute significantly to the strength in that direction. This is delamination, it is out of plane like we have made composite very good composite with the fibers aligned in the this lane direction, this is the fiber alignment direction and say these are the matrix components. If we apply force in this direction, the matrix will show very good characteristics, but as there is no fiber in the this direction, this say y direction cross plane direction. So, once we apply this force in this direction, this matrix may get delaminated. So, although fibers are there in that this direction due to this force out of plane force this matrix will get damaged 
this process is known as delamination. Next is that compressive buckling. So, compressive load can lead to micro buckling of fibers. So, once the compressive load is applied so, this micro buckling of fibers take place because this reinforcing fibers they cannot compress lengthwise axially, whereas the matrix can get compressed because of their higher elasticity. So, that result micro buckling. So, this is one of the reasons of composite damage, composite failure due to high pressure. Compressive load also leads to microscopic delamination buckling. So, delamination buckling especially if the material contains pre-existing delamination region. So, in this zone, there were some delamination there. So, that is why due to compressive load, this delamination buckling took place. These are the failure mechanism. So, composite laminate tests are tensile characteristics bending characteristics, impact properties, compressional behavior. Here we are talking about the axial compression, fiber matrix bonding which is very important as far as the tensile load distribution is concerned, interlaminar strength characteristics, viscoelastic and dynamic properties, density and void content, void content is very important character, we must know the void content, ideally there should not be any void present in the composite, presence of any sorts of void deteriorates the quality of composite drastically. Now, as far as ASTM D3039 test, this is actually specifically for tensile testing of fiber reinforced composite. It suggests at least 5 specimens has to be taken. The specimen dimensions are given here, where tab is required of certain thickness. This tab is required to protect the material from damage from applied load during testing, because there will be jaws. If we do not provide tabs, then the matrix may get damaged. This is tab region, tab length and tab is attached with the comp that composite by adhesive. So, tab is required to increase the area of loading region and thus reduce localized concentration of stress. So, using tab the total stress is divided into divide it is actually distributed to the larger area throughout the width of the specimen. So, it results reduction in local stress concentration. So, as per the standard the strain rate should be selected so as to produce failure within 1 to 
10 minutes the properties here can measured it can be measured that ultimate tensile strength ultimate tensile strain tensile chord modulus of elasticity poisson's ratio tension uh, transition strain now tensile failure if we try to see that modes of failure in composite it's not like the data data of tensile strength of two composites may be same but we must also understand the way it fails during tensile loading similarly for compression for even bending we can get this type of mode and this mode of failure shows the detail by knowing by knowing this mode we can predict the characteristics of failure or nature of failure of composite after applying say tensile load. The mode is expressed in terms of three letters. The first letter which shows the failure type, type of failure and second letter it shows the area where failure took place and the third letter which is showing the location of failure. Let us see L i t what does it mean? L in first letter means lateral, this is L i t it is a lateral, lateral failure, okay. it is not along the direction of load, it is across the direction of load that is a lateral this is the failure zone. I means inside grief it is the at the grip inside the grip point here this is the failure point and location of failure it is at top T is for top here it is a so L i t by knowing that term we can guess it has taken place inside the grip the type of failure was lateral failure and it has taken at top jaws okay top of the samples now we have to decide whether this data we would like to take or not if the failure took place inside the grip that means there are some problem in the grip we have to reject this data similarly g a t means g means here from the first character at a grip so it took place at the grip point not in between the jaws it is at the grip point and failure area is also at the grip and at the top grip that means it is expected that there are some problem with the top jaw top grip. So, we can reject that also L A T lateral A means at grip T means at top. So, in this way we can get idea G D G M D means edge delamination. So, you can see here it has taken place during tensile loading edge delamination took place. G means at gauge means between the grip point. So, there is no problem with the grip and M means at the middle location. So, in addition to the 
numerical value, we can get idea, we must get idea about the type of fracture, type of failure takes place, because in the composite we must know the, the type of failure. If it is taking place due to delamination, that means we have to improve upon the delamination process. So, here it, it guides us the way to improve the manufacturing process. So, we can see different other mode of failures. Let us see x g m, what does it mean? x means explosive, suddenly it broke. So, this is the explosive g means at gauge in between there is no problem with the grips and m is at the middle. So, if we see s g m and say a g m, a means angled g at the gauge and at the middle. So, from this two only difference is that here it is a explosive suddenly it broke and here it is little bit in angle form it has broken. So, from this mode these two modes of failure even if the composites they have the similar or same failure value the stress at failure value, still we will get some idea about the internal structure or we can predict the, the performance of this composite. So, these are the different photographs of flax polypropylene composites after failure, tensile failure. We can see in untreated flax composites, the failures are not straight failure because of the fact that there were less bonding between the flax and the polypropylene. But once we treat the polypropylene with MAGPP, the bonding improved and we can get sharp breakage. So, load carrying capacity has improved and here we can see the fiber slippage took place. Next testing is that compression test, here we are not talking about the cross plane compressive property which we use for fabric testing. Fabric testing we cannot do in plane compression because of the flexibility and in composite the in plane testing is although important, but in in plane composite testing is uh, more applicable here, because once we use composite in load bearing purpose, the loads are placed uh, or applied on composite in in plane direction, but in textile fabric loads are applied in cross plane direction. That is why in composite in plane compressive properties are important this method is most appropriate for composite material reinforcement by high modulus fiber. Now, let us see. So, this is a textile fabric, textile fabric it is flexible and we apply load in cross plane direction. But in composite in case of composite, if we say use 
this is composite material. If we use in plane compression, this will little bit compress and will not get idea about the the usability about its performance in long run. But if we apply load, so this is say composite matter, if we apply load in in plane direction, in that case that there will be loading here and this is specifically used for high performance fiber where tensile strength is very high, but if it fails due to the matrix because as we are applying using high performance fiber here tensile strength will be very high, but the compressive characteristics here mainly depends on the matrix para matrix material and also on the matrix and fiber bonding. So, that it if it is very strong in tensile direction it we must know because in tensile direction the load is carried by the this high performance fiber, but once it is compressed in in plane direction the load is not there on the this high performance fibers load is mainly carried by the matrix material. So, that is why in case of composite we must test for in the in plane compression. So, this is used for high modulus fiber or high say carbon composite or Kevlar composite we must use this technique. This test produce induced compressive force and the specimen actually it is uh, specimen uh, it force into the specimen through shear at the wedge grip interface. So, the test result is influenced by test fixture characteristics, test method sensitivity, specimen preparation how do we prepare specimen, thickness and gauge length if we change the gauge length the test uh, result will change, type of grip, edge effect okay, in the angle ply laminate. So, this are the different factors which affect the test uh, result. So, in this picture if we see this is the composite sample specimen okay, and here these are clamped this is specimen and this is the top jaw upper jaw and this is the lower this is basically it is a upper jaw lower jaw and once it is coming down, okay, they are coming closer, the compressive load, the in plane compressive load will be imparted on the this specimen and we can test the this, we can get the compressive strength value. Minimum number of test as per standard it is 5 and sample dimensions are given here compression test specimen thickness depends on the gauge length, expected compressional strength and longitudinal modulus. So, the thickness of the 
composite we can we have to change depending on the this parameters. So, we can get the results in terms of ultimate compressive strength, ultimate compressive strain, compressive modulus, Poisson's ratio these are the uh, parameters. Again if we see the compression the type of failure is also important. Here the first letter first character it is a mode of failure, second is the failure area similarly and third is the location of failure. Now here the compressive failure is expressed in terms of T A T, T, -A mean, T means here transverse shear this is transverse shear A means at grip this is at the top and T is the location it is at the, at the top that means here compression compressive failure has taken place at the top grip and it is at the grip and it is transverse failure. Let us see next one B G M. B it is a brooming, it is brooming effect means it is a buckling has taken place, delamination has taken place so that it forms a broom like structure. So, brooming due to compression and brooming takes place due to say very poor interface between matrix and the uh, reinforcing material and also the poor quality of reinforced matrix. Even if we can we use very strong very high modulus fiber this if this brooming type of this type of failure take place then we cannot use this. So, this type of failure will not occur during tensile loading. So, for high performance fiber that is why compressive failure is important, compressive testing is important. So, B G M brooming is as taking place, G is at the gauge and M is at the middle portion. So, looking at the failure type we can take decision, we have to adjust our process parameter, we have to change the matrix uh, Quality characteristics, quality of matrix. So, H A T H means it is a through thickness. So, this is through thickness it has taken place A at grief and T T as that top. So, this way we can uh, uh, get all this uh, type of failure S G V long splitting at gauge and at various points. Various so long splitting took place. So these are the different uh, failure characteristics. There are many other combinations can take place. So this is H A T is G V. So we have other characteristics. Now these are the failure. Here earlier you have discussed these are the failure which are acceptable failure during testing actually these are the failure if it take place then we can get actual idea about the performance of the composite and we can take preventive measure. But these are the failure which are non acceptable in terms of compression failure like DTT delamination tab adhesive at top. Here in tab adhesive during testing tab adhesive delamination took place. So, which is not actually the failure due to the composite characteristics it is due to the testing technique like throughout thickness inside grip at top this is the throughout thickness here 
H i t inside creep. If the the failure takes place inside grip that means there is no problem with the composite it is a problem with the creeping DIT delamination inside grip. So, inside grip there is some problem. So, if the failure takes place inside grip or due to grip we do not accept that failure. These are the failures. These failures will not take into account, will reject the result. Next is the bending testing or flexural testing, it is as per ASTM D7264. We take 5 specimen. If we see the unlike tensile shear or compression, the flexural failure is not the basic material characteristics. They are actually combined effect of tensile compression and shear. Once we take the flexural testing, once the composite bends either tensile or compression or shear takes place. So, at while bending at outer side the tensile test takes place. Let us see here. Now, this is a composite. when it is bending this outer side it is a tensile, this is compression and in between there will be shear. Okay. Now, while testing we can reduce shear to some extent by readjusting the say this is the thickness and here if we bend this is bending this is the length of the specimen. So, length and thickness ratio if we change we can readjust or we can manipulate the shear component. So, typically what we try we try to reduce the shear component by readjusting the the selecting the L by T ratio, but during bending tensile failure or compression failure takes place. Suppose the compression tensile strength is low that means it will fail at this zone, compression strength is low so it will fail at this zone. So, this is indirect it shows the that uh, flexural testing it actually it is a combination of tensile compression and shear properties. When a flexural load is applied to the specimen all three stresses are induced. Material failure is dictated by which of the three basic stresses is the first to reach its limiting value that is strength. As I have mentioned if tensile strength is low it is reaching at uh, fast, so it will fail immediately. If compressive low is low um, uh, strength is low it will reach at fast, but the understanding of flexural testing is complex, but the testing it is very simple. Okay if we perform. So, here it is a testing method. So, to simplify the test stress strain in the specimen shear stress component is minimized as I have mentioned. So, there are three components. So, shear stress we can minimize uh, this is done by the support length and 
thickness. So, L by T ratio, if we increase L by T ratio, we will reduce the shear stress component okay. and only the tensile and compressive stress is there and shear stress independent of specimen length while bending moment that is tensile and compressive stress is directly proportional to the specimen length. So, if we increase the length that will affect the tensile and bending stress. Now, there are two types of flexural testing, one is three point loading system. What is three point loading system? Here there will be two support points and another is the external loading points from the top and another is a four point loading system. There will be two support and two external loading point. So, three point loading consists of a support point near each end of the beam and one load point at the middle okay. and four point loading here two support points and these are typically this distance between two loads are typically one fourth of the of this uh, total length of the composites. In general the mechanical strength measured through four point bending is lower than the one we test in the three point test. So, this here in at four point testing mechanical strength we get lower value. So, th this is the stress and strain. Now, let us see P is the breaking load okay, and L is the span length, H thickness of the specimen, B is the specimen width and delta is the deflection at center. So, if we keep all these parameters same for 3 point and 4 point bending, we will see this 4 point bending stress is lower than 3 point bending, whereas strain in 3 point bending is higher than the 4 point bending here. So, strain is higher and here stress is lower. Okay. Next property is which is very important property, it is a impact property. Impact property of the reinforced composite sample can be evaluated using either pendulum type impact testing machine or drop weight impact testing machine. So, pendulum type are of two types typically used Izot impact test method and Charpy impact test method. So, Izot as per ASTM D256 or ISO 180. So, the Izot impact is defined as the kinetic energy needed to failure the initiated fracture. So, to initiate fracture and continue fracture until the specimen is broken. So, there will be fracture initiated. So, then we will measure the total kinetic energy, the nost are created. So, to prevent deformation of the specimen upon impact. So, here if we see the system here, Izod impact testing, what we do here, this is composite with notch created. And another impactor normally, just a little, let us draw here. Okay. 
notch is created. So, there will be one impactor pendulum time impactor which is used for typically we can see in case of tier strength element of tier strength that type of pendulum is used and once it is released this will have impact on this upper side here it this side is gripped this side is gripped and this will imp impact this will have impact and the failure will take initiate uh, will be initiated at this point because it has notch has already been created and the failure will take place So, the specimen is clamped into the pendulum impact test fixture with the notch side facing the striking edge of the pendulum. The pendulum is released and allowed to strike through the specimen if breakage does not occur. So, in case of a breakage it a very strong material in that case we can increase the weight of the hammer. So, here this is the support strike height we can adjust and here is this is the impact direction this is it is after swinging it will have impact. So, all these dimensions are important ok. This is the sample specification standard specification here striking point the upper tip of the specimen at this point the striking will take place and the data which we get is impact energy and impact strain. So, these are the data we get and notch angles are it is 45 degree angle ok. And here this photograph shows the specimen after IZOT impact testing this is the type of failure it takes. So, here you can see it is a notch was created after that failure took place here ok. Another technique is the Charpy impact test method. This test was actually it is a ASTM E 23 or ISO 148 originally developed for the materials and later it is extended to composite dimension 55 by 10 by 10 millimeter each specimen contains 45 degree angled notch on the other side ok of the loading striking point at the middle of the sample. So, here the this is the striking point amount of energy absorbed by the specimen that is the data. So, another test is the drop test by ASTM D7136. This test method determines the damage resistance of the multidirectional polymer matrix composite. It is a laminated in laminated form ok. This is showing the impactor flat rectangular composite plate is subjected to an out of plane concentrated impact ok. So, potential energy of the drop weight is defined by the mass and drop height. So, we can change the mass of this impactor and height of this impactor and there will be a free fall and it will impact on the composite material the specimen dimension 150 mm by 100 mm and thickness is as per the specimen. So, the damage resistance property generated by the test method depends on the specimen geometry, impactor velocity, layup, impactor force. These are the different parameters which will affect the test result. So, we have to keep all these parameters 
standard, the damage resistance is quantified in terms of the resulting size and type of damage of the specimen. As we have already seen earlier, the damage size is also important. The damage response is a function of the test configuration. These are the different types of damages, depth depression, split or crack combined. So, these are the different types of damages during the impact testing. So, fiber matrix interface bonding is also important. So, we must know it is very important as far as fiber reinforced composite. So, we must study, we must know the uh, fiber matrix interface bonding strength. So, there are basically four different types of principles or mechanisms of bonding between fiber or reinforcing material and matrix. One is this is the adsorption and weighting. So, that means the matrix material will get adsorbed and weight the reinforcing material. So, that type of bonding uh, take place. Mechanical keying is also one of the mechanisms where the rough surface of reinforcing material is created. So, that there is a uh, mechanical bonding, mechanical keying take place which enhance the bonding strength, chemical reaction between reinforcing material and the matrix and electrostatic attraction. So, electrostatic attraction is one of the methods where we can get the matrix adhered to the fiber surface. So, bonding strengths can be controlled by coupling agent that we have already discussed using one experiment using MAGPP silent coupling agent is one such agent which improves the bond strength. So, we can increase the bond strength by coupling agent. The bond strength can be measured by different techniques. These are single fiber pull out test, single fiber push out test, fiber push down test full fragmentation technique. The following assumptions are made during the interfacial bond strength measurement. No shear strain in the fiber during pull out, no shear strain is taking place. No transfer of normal stress across the fiber end. So, normal stress is not getting transferred to the composite or adjacent fiber. These are the basic assumptions. Now, in single fiber pull out test, one single fiber is gripped, this is the fiber is gripped and here is the composite is gripped here. It involves pulling a particularly embedded single reinforcing particle fiber out of a block of matrix. This is a matrix block and one single fiber has been placed. So, debonding it take uh, debonding can take place propagation of debonding and frictional sliding. It takes place in three stages at first debonding starts, then this debonding propagates throughout the interface, then frictional sliding will start. So, that will give us idea about the interfacial bonding. The drawbacks of this method are the interface of the specimen may differ from those in real material as different degree of constants are imposed in absence of neighboring fibers. So, that is basically it's a, it gives us one idea because in actual composite there will not be a single fiber, there will be many other fibers, there may not be 100 percent complete uh, covering by the composite material as a matrix material, 
there will be diff other interference of uh, neighboring fibers, there will be difference in manufacturing techniques. So, the technique gives a rough idea and it is very difficult, it is difficult to carry out specially thin brittle fiber. So, thin fiber and which is brittle in nature, we cannot use this technique. Single fiber push out test, again here we prepare composite and, and then in we, we prepared in the slice form, this here it is showing one width of the slice or thickness of the slice, this thickness is very small maybe in terms of uh, millimeter or few millimeter and then the fiber, this is the fiber is pushed against the matrix material which is gripped here, it is pushed out and this distance is very small and during pushing again the debonding and all this will take place and the fiber becomes displaced, so that it protrude from the bottom of the sample, it is displacing here debonding is has started from there, then it has propagated and then fiber then sliding, frictional sliding took place. Main drawback here is that we have we cannot use this technique for very fine fiber, fiber with larger diameter we can definitely use fiber push down test here again in push down test bulk fibers are taken and that will be that is pushed down by applying force. So, this leaves a permanent displacement between top of the fiber and the top of the matrix and that we can uh, get idea about the interface. Another technique is the full fragmentation technique. This method is used for mainly metal matrix composite, sometime polymer matrix composite. Now, we can see here typically the for fibers with very high modulus fiber, we can use where extensibility is less this is the matrix and if we see this is these are the fiber, this, are, this is fiber. Now, once we apply load, once we apply axial load, if the bond strength is high, then the fiber will fragment like this. But if the bond strength is not high, the fiber will not break and there will be extension on the composite or matrix material. So, that by knowing this length ratio, we can get idea about the bond strength. This method is used for mainly metal matrix composites and we can use this for high modulus fiber. In this method involves embedding a single fiber in the matrix and straining matrix in tension parallel to the fiber. As I have already shown, fiber fractures fragment into pieces, aspect ratio exhibits by the fiber segment are measured. So, if the fiber does not damage, does not actually um, break, we can get idea that there is less bonding strength. Okay. Also, next parameter is that void content, which is very important. The void content is uh, actually higher void content deteriorates the quality of the composite drastically and void content is by measuring the density of material, experimental density is measured by experimentally, then we can measure the theoretical density, this is the theoretical density 
by knowing the density of matrix and density of fiber and volume fraction and volume fiber volume fraction we can we know these things. So, from there we can calculate the void content. So, void content is the I from where presence of actual voids that we can get to know and which actually detonates higher void content detonates the matrix quality to a great extent. So, we will stop here in next segment we will discuss few testing techniques which are non destructive in nature earlier techniques we have discussed uh, all the uh, some specimens are destructive in nature and what we have seen though for those we have to uh, prepare specimen and test, but there are some situations where we cannot take out the matrix material during use application if we want to test whether there is any damage whether what are the characteristics there those we can test only by non destructive method. So, non destructive testing of composites we will test in the next segment till then thank you.